What's up everybody, it's Seth from Fowler Customs and today I've got a very special video because technically I have three videos in one. I've got a sneaker shopping video, I've got a dope clothing haul video, and I've got a giveaway. So without further ado, let's get into it. Thanks so much for tuning in today guys. Make sure to hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't yet. But with all that being said, let's jump right into sneaker shopping. So today I went sneaker shopping at the Foot Locker flagship on 34th Street and it's really honestly the best Foot Locker you can go to. They always have great stuff. Um, it's kind of a huge Foot Locker. It's two floors but that's kind of deceiving because the bottom floor I guess is their stock room or something so you can't actually go to it. They had the Black Cat 13s which are a really nice looking shoe and I've considered grabbing but I just don't really need them. They also had those, uh, those foam posits. I forget the exact name of them but they're pretty fresh. And then you had some camo Air Force Ones. They had a pretty great selection today in the uh, Nike section. They actually had some uh, Air Force One special fields, which I was surprised that they still had because nowhere else in the city that I know of has them. Um, they actually had both colorways in uh, you know, a good amount of sizes. I really like the black pair, but not enough to, to grab it. I, I'm fine with the string colorway. Um, it's definitely a nice looking shoe though, and I didn't realize that they changed up the material and instead of using suede like they did on the, uh, the string colorway, they used leather, which honestly means it's going to be a more durable shoe. Um, I just really like the string colorway better. I think it's uh, a nicer colorway and it goes with more of what I have. Then of course you still had the Pantone 11s sitting, and uh, I don't think they have as many sizes as they did in the past, um, but these have been sitting since they opened like months ago last year, um, and just no one wants them because they're just so expensive and they haven't gone on sale or anything like that so I'm assuming just over the next couple months they'll eventually get bought up but of course they had the 13s again um, you had some pretty good selection of Jordans nothing really crazy I mean I guess the Pantones are kinda crazy but you know and then you had the Maroon 6s um, definitely a nice looking shoe there was a great selection of Kyries they had all sorts of Kyrie 2s they had the Kyrie 3s and then they had a bunch of Kobe ADs which um, I'm not sure if you've seen a lot of reviews of the Kobe ADs, but people just really don't like them performance-wise. I didn't really have too much trouble with them, but that's because I wasn't playing in them as hard as other people were. Um, I still think they're like a good-looking shoe, I just think that they're not a great performance basketball shoe. Next up, they had the, uh, the New Balance 247 Lux. Um, that was a shoe that I was really considering grabbing, but it sold out online before I pulled the trigger. Apparently they had a whole wall of them at uh, Foot Locker though, so if I ever decide to grab them, I know where to go. Next I hit up the Adidas section, they always have some great stuff. They had the EQTs with the Ultra Boost uh, midsole, and they're a nice looking shoe. Um, they're not exactly my thing, so I'm probably never going to grab a pair unless people really want me to do a review on them, but not something I really want to grab. They had both colorways, and then of course they had some uncaged Ultra Boost, they had a lot of Adidas basketball. One thing I was surprised by is that there wasn't any crazy explosives. I guess they're just phasing them out because they're older, but I know the low top version is coming out next month, but I'm definitely going to grab them for a review. And then of course they had the undyed, uncaged Ultra Boost, which they're not too bad. And then finally there was the Curry 3 in the Chinese New Year colorway, which I actually kind of dig. So unfortunately I didn't pick up anything at Foot Locker, even though I was uh, really tempted. But over the last week I did actually pick up some dope stuff that I'm excited to show you guys, so let's get into it. The first thing I grabbed is from Urban Outfitters and it's this burgundy beanie. I've always loved beanies, I used to be a metalhead in high school and this is all I'd ever wear. And I had that crazy like long hair that no one should ever have, that pretty much, I think if I stretched it out it might actually have touched my chin, which uh, was way too long. But like I said, this was my headwear of choice. And uh, I mean it was 12 bucks so it's probably more expensive than a burgundy plain beanie should have been but uh, it was an impulse buy and I still dig it so it is what it is. Next up I got in a shirt which actually just sold out in my website like a week ago I think. It's this Harambe rest in peace shirt. It's obviously based on a brand that we all know and love. It's by a good friend of mine who's also a designer. We actually both went to design school together and uh, it's a sick shirt. This was the second run of the shirts. He only printed them in super limited quantities and I think this is actually the last print he's ever going to do. So uh, that's unfortunate because this is a dope shirt and I would have liked to have had more of them. But if you ordered one off my website you should have it by now I think. And uh, I just love this shirt so I was super stoked that I was able to get a second one. And this time because I sold the shirts on my website I didn't have to pay for it which is nice because the first time even though he's a good friend of mine he still made me pay for it. 
whatever. I technically got two for the price of one, so I can't be too mad about it. So before we move on to the next pickup, I just want to let you guys know where I got this olive bomber jacket because people keep asking me. It's just a standard bomber jacket from H&M. I'm pretty sure if you search on their website for it, you should be able to find it. I'll try and find a link for you and put it in the description below, um, but I'm not sure if it's still available on their website. I think it was like 30 bucks and it's not the best quality, but I've had it for like four or five months and I haven't really had any problems with it. So. I mean, it seems to be holding up just fine. So like I said, if I can find the link, I'll put it in the description below. And I'll try and do that for everything else that I can find links for in the video so you guys can pick them up too if you want them. But now moving on to the next pickup, I got this dope Navy Thrasher magazine tee from, uh, I believe, Zoomies? Yeah, Zoomies. And it was uh, $24.95. The material's not the best, but I dig the colors, I dig the logo. And that's why I picked it up. Next up, I got this really dope jacket that my girlfriend actually grabbed for me from an army surplus store. So I'm not going to put a link in the description because, I mean, you're probably not going to be able to find this online. Well, I mean, you never know, but I'm just not going to worry about it. So if you want a jacket like this, I'm sure you can find one online or you can hit up an army surplus store or something like that and find one. But it's this really dope camo jacket. It's got these Velcro areas for patches. Not that I have any patches to throw on there, but I have the option if I need it. I think she grabbed this for like four or five bucks, which is which is crazy. But it's actually made of this really nice heavy duty material. I think it's a little bit big for me, but you know what? I can work with it because oversized is the look right now, so it'll work out. Next up, I got another pickup from Urban Outfitters, and I actually got this to go underneath the camo jacket because these colors are sort of complementary and the material is pretty similar, so I thought, I don't know what I was thinking, but hopefully it looks good together. Like I said, it's from Urban Outfitters. It's this oversized tee. The uh, arms aren't hemmed or anything. They're just kind of raw edges. It's made up of this thick, rough fabric. You've got a pocket there, you know, if you need to store your pens or uh, whatever people put in pockets. So there's that. And I think this guy ended up costing me 28 bucks. That's actually a lot for a plain t-shirt. I probably should have just gone to like H&M or anywhere that sells oversized t-shirts and I could have found something for cheaper. But I mean, hey, I have it now and I've paid for it, so no turning back. And last but certainly not least, I've got my favorite pickup out of the bunch. It's this dope Jord watch. So the good people over at Jord sent me this dope wooden watch so I could show you guys. If you haven't heard of this company before, basically what they do is they make these dope handcrafted wooden watches. And as I said before, they were super nice and let me pick out my favorite watch on the website to show you guys. The watch that I picked because I liked it the best was from their Conway series and of course it's a wooden watch. I got the dark sandalwood and burgundy colorway because I'm about as Irish as you can get. So I needed some that was dark so it would contrast my skin and of course I got the burgundy chronograph face because burgundy is like my favorite color I had never really looked into or even heard of wood watches before Jord hit me up and to be honest I was pretty skeptical but when I actually got the watch in hand I was kind of blown away by the craftsmanship because not only is it handmade but it's also got really great materials so the wood is not cheap at all it's really nice wood you've got these great metal accents that actually hold the band together which is awesome and the laser etched detailing is crazy I love it also one of my favorite parts of this watch isn't actually the watch. It's the crazy wood box that it came in. Of course, you've got the Jord logo on the top. You've got this crazy magnetic lid, which kind of snaps into place. I mean, I suck at snapping it into place apparently, but it does it. And you've also got this little magnetic pull-out drawer to keep your extra watch links and things like that. Which, speaking of watch links, Jor does a really great job of giving you the option to be able to size up the watch if you need to. So for me, if you couldn't tell, I have really tiny wrists, so I actually had to have them take out some links for me before they sent it out to me. And on their website, they actually have an option to allow you to add or remove links depending on what size of wrist you have. I think it's like 10 bucks or something like that. But for me, I wouldn't have even been able to wear this watch if I hadn't gotten it sized, so Thank God they had that option. But the best part about this whole thing is that I'm actually collaborating with Jord so I can do a watch giveaway. Basically the way this giveaway works is that I've put a link to the landing page for the giveaway in the description below. The prize is 180 bucks towards any watch on their website. The giveaway started right when this video dropped and ends on February 5th, 2017 at 11.59 p.m. And like I said, all you have to do is follow the steps on Jord's landing page and you're good to go. I've actually had this watch for a couple weeks now and I used to only have my Fossil watch and my Apple watch and I've never really had anything else, but somehow this broke into the rotation and uh, I dig it, man. That's pretty much it for the video today, guys. Make sure to enter that giveaway for the Jord watch in the description below. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to Fowler Customs if you want to see more content just like this and follow Fowler Customs on Instagram and on Twitter.